Something that I've noticed when it comes to the more casual lost media audience, or people who follow searches from the outside rather than participating in them, is that there seems to be a misconception about how long some lost media searches actually take. When you watch a YouTube video or read a summary on the forums about all the progress that's happened in a search, it can sometimes seem like everything happened overnight or relatively quickly, when the reality is that it can take months or even years for certain searches to progress anywhere at all. This is especially true for topics that have had special circumstances surrounding why they became lost in the first place. Today, I'd like to revisit some of these topics and discuss them in relation to the length of how long it's been since the search for them started but also give you guys an update on any progress that might have been made since. Similar to my Dead End Lost Media video, maybe this will reignite some interest in these older topics, or lead to more progress that otherwise wouldn't have been made. Let's take a look at the first topic. Here's a really interesting piece of lost media that had been on my radar for a long time prior to my video on the subject, even though I didn't see too many people talking about it at the time. It was one of those articles that I discovered deep in the lost media wiki, and once I brought some attention to the topic, it seemed to get discussed more often. Though this was short-lived, as it died down again after only a couple weeks. Here is Batman Fights Dracula, a black and white film starring two pop culture icons that was produced in the Philippines back in 1967. What makes this film so interesting to me, and why it's become a notable piece of lost media, is for the fact that firstly, it's a comedy film, so it's not exactly the genre you'd expect from either character to star in, and secondly, is that it's completely unofficial and unlicensed, which makes it all the more bizarre. Apparently the film starred two well-known Filipino actors at the time, and was aired in cinemas around the country. Despite this, however, the film hasn't been seen since the 60s, and is almost completely lost, which is where the mystery begins. The majority of content we have from the film are a couple posters advertising its release, and several production images that resurfaced from a Filipino blog that discussed the film. It's speculated these came from newspapers at the time, which makes them incredibly rare, but not of the highest quality. Surprisingly, they also gave us some good leads to follow, including names of the production studio and actors in the film but the search isn't as easy as contacting them online. This film is so old, and the production surrounding it is so obscure, that the majority of crew and people associated with this film are either impossible to reach or no longer around. And I wasn't even the first person to take on this search, as there was another attempt prior to my video that came up empty-handed as well. It's believed that because archival of the Filipino film industry was so poor back in those days, all copies of the film could very well be gone, or if they do exist, might not be in any salvageable state, with no footage having ever resurfaced. There were a couple glimmers of hope regarding possible archival of footage. One was a Filipino website having caught wind of my video when it went up, and featured an article on the site that discussed the movie, as well as the search itself. I was really hoping this would have led to someone in the country having recalled the film or knowing where to find a copy, and it actually kinda did, though indirectly. Not long after that, I did get a message from someone who stated they were the niece of one of the directors of the film, and had been going on a little search for the film as well while working on a project that documented her grandfather's life and the film industry. It was cool gaining some insight about this, and she claimed she would be visiting the Philippines again for her film, and to look for a copy of Batman Fights Dracula in a more hands-on way. However, I never heard anything after that and haven't received any updates. 
though this was at the end of 2020, so I wouldn't be surprised if the project was put on hold. And it'll be two years this October when the search within the lost media community would have started. I've always felt like this is a good backburner topic that will get found when the right people get their eyes on it. So I'll hold out hope that the filmmaker I met can travel to the Philippines and give me a good update eventually. If there was ever a lost media search that seemed to drag on and on with little to no updates, I think Pink Morning Cartoon would win that award. A lot of you who are more in tune to the lost media community probably forgot about this topic, and if you're new to the scene, there's a chance you missed the entirety of the search when it was in full swing. For those unaware, Pink Morning Cartoon was the name given to a series of eerie animations that were discovered on YouTube a couple years ago whose origins were unknown. At the time of their discovery, they had been sitting online for more than a decade, only being able to be described by their appearance and rumors of where they came from. Since the topic was so mysterious and remained unsolved for so long, a search group quickly formed and the rumors started being researched, with the most popular claims stating that the animations were segments from a religious-themed show that only aired on local stations early in the morning. Of course, this unsettling claim made the topic far more interesting, and the thread on the Lost Media Wiki forums quickly grew in addition to a Discord server where the uploader of the original clips was helping out. While I only came upon the thread towards the end of the search, all of the different claims were really fun to read about, including which local station might have aired the series and who were the people that produced it. Contrary to popular belief, this series of animation wasn't anything malicious and was completely sourced once a portion of the end credits was unearthed. The name was found to be associated with a reverend who owned a local station at the time and created an animated show called TV8 Kids Fun Festival, which is where the original animations came from. Apparently, it was really popular in the community, and rumor has it, the series was frequently recorded, which is where the mystery begins. To date, very few segments from Kids Fun Festival have been archived or survived in any capacity, and the search for them has been in a rather dormant state for close to a year going on two years this August. The big break in the search was definitely sourcing the animations, but the problem with getting any more content from the series comes from the fact that it was confirmed the masters were destroyed years ago from someone related to the Reverend. Not only that, but the church she worked at was also demolished in 2010, so there's no way a backup archive would exist in that way either. The community decided to do the next best thing, which was purchase tapes that might have had content recorded on them. A good theory, considering the show was apparently popular back then, as I stated previously. It was reported that a box containing around 800 VHS tapes was bought from the area where Kids Fun Festival aired, and ever since then, the Pink Morning Cartoon community has been going through them one by one to see if there's any more content that was recorded. This is probably the only way any more content from the series could be recovered, but unfortunately, as far as I know, nothing was found on any of the tapes that have been viewed. I'm not sure how many tapes of the 800 have been watched, since that in itself would take a lot of time, but so far, nothing new has come from this lead, which is a little disappointing when you consider how long it's been since the tapes were acquired. Even still, it's not likely that the entire series would be saved on the tapes, so there will probably still be missing content left after all the tapes have been gone through. I still think the story surrounding this piece of lost media is really heartwarming, but it's unfortunate we might never get to preserve the work that was put into the Kids Fun Festival series. I had to include this next entry in the video, I couldn't help myself, because if there was ever a search that can be categorized as one of the longest that is currently ongoing, I feel like this would be the perfect example of that. 
If you've been following my channel for the past few months, you've probably come across my videos discussing Slamfest 99. And if you've been watching my channel for even longer than that, then you might remember the original video I did covering the topic back in June of 2020. That was a long time ago, and when I was putting together that video, I honestly thought the search would be wrapped up by the end of the year. I never thought that two years later, we'd still be looking for a Nintendo event that was broadcast over the internet, which, in theory, hundreds of people could have seen or preserved in some way. Clearly, that's not the case, and that's exactly why this search has been going on for as long as it has. The story of Slamfest 99 begins in April of 1999 at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Nintendo decided to put on a live-action Smash Bros. battle with costumed characters that fought inside of a boxing ring to promote the launch of the original Super Smash Bros. game. It was live-streamed over the internet at that time, and a rebroadcast was even up on Nintendo's website for months after the event was live. However, that video didn't stay up forever, and when it was removed from Nintendo's site, along with the server that hosted it, the entire mystery unfolded. No video footage of this event has been saved, and it's likely that no one has even seen it since 1999, leaving it almost completely lost. For the past two years, myself, along with the On The Hunt search team, have been scouring every trail and piece of evidence we possibly can in the hopes to get this wacky event unearthed and archived for everyone to enjoy. But things have not been going our way, and we're not much closer to finding it now than we were two years ago. While I plan on making another full update video, discussing our journey over the past few months and where the search stands currently, for this video I'd like to discuss the main problem we currently face and why progress has been so slow. Essentially, the biggest issue we face is the fact that so few people would even have access to the live stream nowadays, and getting in touch with those people is very difficult. At the beginning of the search, and even for quite a while into it, I was finding a lot of contacts on the Nintendo side of things, and the search group was finding a lot of contacts on the technical side of things, whether that be from the streaming company or PR company Nintendo partnered with and we contacted a large majority of people who did respond to us about the search, but they either had little information to share, or simply didn't know of the event and weren't sure where to direct us to continue the search. Even old fan sites that had photos of the broadcast, or discussed it in fan mail segments, had no leads or content that would be helpful to us, and we crossed off so many names from our contact list because of it. Where things stand right now and what it looks like it's going to come down to is getting in direct contact with the streaming company that did the broadcast and having them confirm or deny having it in their archives. There's no one else we believe who would have a copy and we haven't been able to discuss the search in enough detail with those people to give us an answer at this point. It's been like this for the past couple months and before that it was just crossing names off a list. Things aren't progressing too fast, and I never thought it would come down to one or two names, resulting in Slamfest getting found or staying lost. In a bit of an honorable mention search for this video is a topic that's way older compared to the ones I've already discussed, because it was one of the oldest pieces of lost media I covered, despite not really having a dedicated search effort surrounding it. If you are familiar with Sonic Culture and his game releases, then you are probably familiar with Sonic 06 and how the version of the game that was released was not the original vision the title had. Back during the Tokyo Game Show in 2005, Sonic 06 debuted with a teaser trailer that showed off what the game was designed to be like, which include high speed sections, a more dynamic environment, and Super Sonic himself. While the trailer itself can be viewed in full, and there's nothing about it specifically that is lost, every popular upload of this trailer is a cam version, which means it's someone filming the screen itself 
and is not a direct capture of the footage. So in this way, we can say the high quality version of the trailer is lost. I always thought it was weird that this trailer seemed to only exist in this way, and even the ones uploaded by gaming websites used this lower quality version. But if you look deep enough into the old internet culture for Sonic, you'll come across a very interesting video that led to a whole lot of mystery back when I first covered this topic. In an old AMV that was made a long time ago, you'll notice that clips from the Sonic 06 trailer were used, and that they're of noticeably higher quality than the footage taken from the cam recordings that were much more popular. This means, at one point in time, the clean rip version of the trailer was out there, and the person who made this AMV had access to it and used clips from it in their video. They've been asked numerous times since my video was made about where they got the footage and if they still have it, but they've made it clear they don't remember and have nothing from it anymore. It's been that way for years, and as far as I know, no one has ever found the source of the clean rip or been able to find another copy of it elsewhere. Some people have DM'd me with claims that they found it, but usually it's just a slightly edited or obscure upload that no one else noticed, and not the real clean rip. Someone even shared a Tokyo Game Show DVD with me that claimed to have the trailer on it, but unfortunately, it was another cam recording. This was really surprising, and I think if even a DVD doesn't have the real trailer on it, that it must have found its way online through an unofficial source back in the day, and can't be found on anything that was released. We've talked about a lot of topics that definitely should have been found by now, for the amount of effort that the community has put into trying to find them. But maybe the most surprising one to me is when an entire fan base dedicates their energy to a search, only to gain bits and pieces of the entire project over the span of several years. This is the legendary search for the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood movie that was released into theaters 15 years ago and has barely seen the light of day since. It's surprising to hear that a piece of JoJo media so big can simply go missing, considering all the popularity the series has gained in recent years. But it's believed that's exactly the reason why the film hasn't been seen since its original release. The Phantom Blood movie, as expected, adapts the first story arc of the JoJo series into a full theatrical film, which was released into Japanese theaters only. While this adaptation changed some things around with the characters and story, contrary to popular belief, it was not pulled from theaters for being poorly received and the creator of the series didn't hate it. But simply, it had a full run and was replaced by newer films at the time. However, after its release is where things get a little more questionable. It's believed the reason why the film was never released onto home media is because of a controversy surrounding a scene from a JoJo OVA that resulted in the rights of the series being revoked from the film's producer, Studio A3P. This happened right around the time Phantom Blood likely would have seen a home media release, which is why it never happened and cannot be viewed in full today. Despite this, there has been a very large search effort that's been going on for three years since I became aware of it, but has been discussed and talked about for much longer than that. There were so many rumors about the film's whereabouts back in those days too, such as fans having made mention of finding mysterious copies of the film throughout the years, or bootlegs having exchanged hands at fan conventions. Unfortunately, none of these claims could be proven, and even the ones that were followed didn't result in finding anything. Though the entire search hasn't been coming up empty-handed, and if you look through what has been found, you'll probably be surprised at just how much was able to be archived. The most important and largest find is that of a 16-minute scene from the movie that was uploaded to YouTube from a student who got the footage from his professor for use with a sound design class. Not only that, but the original trailer for the film was also recovered from a sampler DVD, 
which shows a variety of differences compared to what we've seen from the movie so far. There's also a plethora of screenshots, concept art, and promotional material that has been found and saved over the years, giving us a lot of insight about not only the movie itself, but how it was produced and promoted in Japan. While there was so much content being found a couple years ago, I did put the topic on the back burner after that, and wasn't even sure if the search was still going, until Liquid X from the search server informed me of all kinds of new contacts the search team had made, including theaters that actually showed the film back in the day. There's also an interest from the composer of the film to release the soundtrack, but would need permission first, and many of the original producers and distributors of the film don't reply to messages. That's another part of this search that makes things more difficult, is how Japanese studios often bury older adaptations of series intentionally for cohesiveness across the brand, which is why David Productions Jojo is the only kind of media and adaptation of the manga you see nowadays, compared to the older stuff. Even though progress has been slow, I'm glad that this search hasn't stopped, and there definitely seems to be enough sources out there to still gain information. I think that's one of the advantages to having a piece of lost media that is so widely popular. Though, even the unpopular ones that require thinking outside of the box have their benefits and streaks of progress as well, which helps. It might not matter how you look at it, because progress is still progress, even if it takes a much longer time to go through, but once you make those breakthroughs, the reward will feel so much sweeter. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out some of my other game-related Lost Media videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Finn.